are allowed to think big and dream big. How to generate different systems. Systems that provide stability and are nested within the harmony of nature. I'm excited to explore with you the intriguing bandwidth of information our researchers and friends have surfaced. Let's dive into our next topic to find out how we can actively shape a future worth pursuing and living for. Hi, my name is Yuea and I'm going to guide you today through this episode. Overcoming the painful side effects of the market economy. A system change with the common good economy. Let's dive into the unpleasant side effects of the market economy. Companies are forced to make large profits in order to remain competitive. To do so, they have to produce cheaply at the expense of the environment and quality of life. This corporate value creation only increases the wealth of shareholders and private global companies. The community is thereby financially damaged, among other things. The destruction of livelihoods by profit interests is reflected in resource scarcity, climate change, the loss of biodiversity and the widening gap between rich and poor. These consequences can only be solved holistically and systemically. According to a survey by the Bertelsmann Foundation, 88% of Germans want a new economic order. But how do you get corporations to turn their economic orientation completely upside down? And moreover, those companies that feel committed to the SDGs face the task of integrating the demands of the SDGs into their corporate culture. So how can we work in the old to change the new? And what is the economy for a common good? As an ethical market economy, the common good economy is supposed to offer an alternative to capitalism by primarily pursuing social, charitable and environmental goals. It would also enable the implementation of the very ethical SDGs. This can be seen on the EcoGood website. I'll put the link in the podcast description for you. There are special tools for the implementation of the common good economy. The Common Good Balance Sheet is a point system that companies can use as a guide. With the help of an evaluation matrix, a company then balances the structures in its business. The Common Good Balance Sheet is therefore based on a Common Good Matrix. The balance sheet is drawn up parallel to the financial balance sheet and goes beyond CSR reports. Within the company, human dignity, solidarity, social justice, ecological sustainability, transparency, democratic co-decision and the degree of income spread are balanced. For example, according to the common good economy, the highest salary of the executive board may only be 3 to 15 times higher than the lowest, depending on the industry. The companies with good common good balances receive legal advantages like lower taxes, lower customs duties, etc. Ethical, ecological and regional products and services become cheaper than unethical, unecological and global ones. The task of the common good economy is to establish a common good orientation in the value system of citizens, in the economy and in politics. This should make individuals aware of the asocial form of current economic activity and, within the economy, induce companies to work together in cooperation instead of competition. According to the concept of the common good economy, this change in values can be achieved by changing the constitution and the legal framework to change the taxation of companies. And what effect would the common good economy have on companies and the rest of the society? Surpluses may not be used for investments in the financial markets, hostile takeovers of other companies, distributions to persons who do not work for the company and donations to political parties. In exchange, the tax on corporate profits is waived. Since profit and income maximization no longer play a role, companies are exempt from the growth constraint. Private property rights would be limited to 10 million euro, 
and the amount of inheritances and gifts to 500,000 euro and the amount of income to 20 times of the minimum wage. Any surplus would benefit the general public. Strengthening the common good would also be a stronger motivator for a company's innovation. The larger the company, the more voting rights pass to employees and society. Companies with more than 5,000 employees become wholly employee-owned. Drinking water supply and energy and transport infrastructure are managed and controlled by the people as democratic common goods. Financial markets are democratically controlled and promote only socially and ecologically sustainable developments. And this includes especially local and regional economic cycles. Due to the normative evaluation in all criteria, it is never possible even for fair, ecological, sustainable, regionally producing companies to achieve a full score. This shows the issue of the establishment and expansion of the common good economy. For large corporations, the changeover would involve radical processes of change. Companies that do not act in a public welfare oriented way would have to reorient themselves or would disappear from the market. But the International Federation for the Economy for the Common Good Association supports companies with subsidies or advice. Smaller and medium sized businesses that are strongly committed to the interests of their employees, society and the environment would be happy to be rewarded for their efforts in the form of tax benefits. So how does the common good economy support system change? The political, media and scientific perception of the common good economy is very positive. The European Economic and Social Committee drafted an opinion on the common good economy. In the vote in 2015, 86% of the committee members voted in favor of incorporating the economy of the common good into the legal framework of the EU and its member states. At the same time, the movement started advocacy work on directives and legislative projects. But there is also criticism towards the concept that integrating a differentiated reward system for common good action into taxation seems difficult. Complex systems with high audit requirements are also often gateways for corruption, etc. The common good economy is also too bureaucratic. Actually, the common good economy should have a global impact, but due to the different natural and economic conditions of the countries, their value systems, their legal and political systems, a worldwide implementation seems unrealistic. The common good economy is neither a capitalist market economy nor a communist economic theory. It is a process that is open to development and is to be thought further by politics, the economy and society. It is the next step into the future and shows where the journey should go. Furthermore, it seeks synergies with similar approaches. The intention of the common good economy is primarily to change the current economic system, not a direct system change. However, the concept is seen as the cornerstone of a movement that advocates systemic change. So, from the perspective of some, it supports system change. It joins the post-growth movement, which is becoming more discursively powerful and can thus draw attention to economic grievances. However, other advocates of the post-growth economy, such as Nico Pech, criticized the common good economy for not leading to a system change, but for continuing to be structured as a market economy. It therefore seems to be more of a transitional solution to something that the future will bring. Finally, I hope that this episode has given you food for thought for a possible economic order.